I'm torn whether to say a few words or not. Perhaps I will not. <laughs> this will, in a sense, be um, the continuation of uh, of the lecture last night, which, at least for me, it was a, a strange experience. Um, it was a, a lecture that that was followed uh, uh, very intensively uh, by the audience. It was obvious. It was not possible not to follow it intensely. Um, it was not easy to follow uh, because uh, it was more than one lecture in one. But then it was as if it, it had been a live dissection of the brain of the, of the historian, um, which was an unexpected uh, sight and experience. Um, and so uh, the audience was uh, obviously so much overwhelmed that uh, we simply did not know how to react. Uh, and uh, you tried already to build a bridge between the lecture and the seminar uh, today, um, referring uh, not only to Swans but to to Max Weber and how Max Weber tried to turn Marx uh, uh, from his head into his feet. Um, which my guess is it's not easy for most of us to understand because nobody reads Marx today. Um, then students, even at the history department, learn about colonialism. They do not learn much about uh, the original accumulation anymore. So it is difficult, even in case we read Marx Weber, it is difficult to understand the relationship between Weber and Marx without knowing Marx anymore. Um, and not knowing Marx, um, in a very strange way, has something to do with you. Uh, that is um, the emergence of microhistory. Um, at least was co-terminal with the dissolution of the grand narrative. Um, with the end of reading uh, such uh, utopian text as Marx's Capital, or even Max Weber's uh, Protestant ethic. Um, although what microhistory tried to do was not a reaction to Marx in this sense, it was much more a reaction to, let's say, the second generation of the Annal. Uh, usually, people refer to the emergence of microhistory as a, a reaction to Annal, but not Annal in general, not to Lucien Febvre and Mark Locke, who are very important for you and for, for most of the microhistorians, but for them, which is a, a, a different uh, case. So when people, instead of these uh, grand texts, read uh, <coughs> microhistory, like your works, uh, then they don't read Marx. So they don't understand your references to Max Weber as opposed to, to Marx. So um, let me stop here, um, trying to embed the emergence of microhistory in this very strange uh, context. Thanks. Thank you very much.